Today, I'm gonna to be talking about my acting career. In this video, I'm gonna go into that and explain a little bit more about that journey. Now, my whole life has been a mix of different performances all the way from when I was a little kid up until now. I've done everything that you could possibly imagine from dancing to acting to singing even. I actually never started off as an actor. I was more of a dancer and more of just like an overall performer. I started off doing a lot of minor hip hop stuff in primary school, but then when I got into high school, I started to do a little bit more on the side of contemporary dancing. I know no, it's, it's weird to believe that this person did three years of contemporary. But I did, and during that time, I actually was fortunate enough to be selected as part, well, actually auditioned for a part in our musical at the time. It was Grease, the musical, and it was something that was actually performed at one of the big entertainment centers in Darwin. By the way, in the Grease musical, I played Eugene. That's hence, hence the ghetto. But it wasn't until I got to university and moved to Melbourne was when I really started to focus more on the acting side of things. Dad kind of gets it, but they both want me to settle down. Do the whole career thing. Now I didn't study acting at university, I actually did digital media as my course um, and that was because I was interested at behind the scenes stuff. I wanted to focus mainly on the overall aspect of media. I wanted to dip into everything from radio to web design, video to music, Photoshop, anything I could get my hands on. At the time it just seemed like a good option for me because I actually didn't really know specifically what I wanted to do. Now you might be wondering why I never studied acting full time and the truth is is because it wasn't a passion of mine when I initially started applying for university, nor was I confident enough to think that I would ever get into a prestigious or good acting school. My mum was very supportive and allowed me to follow my passions. And at times I do wish that I, I did an acting degree, but at this point in time, I just thought, you know, I wanted to get a degree that could also get me your typical nine to five job. Why not kill two birds with one stone? There's four of us. Are we gonna only pick one? First thing I did was find an agent. It was pretty much like, you know, those random ads that you find on Facebook. And I found one and I thought, you know what? Why not? My experience as an extra really helped me and solidified my sort of professionalism on set. After about two or three years of doing this, I decided that it just got repetitive. It did get kind of mundane for me and I did feel like I wasn't getting the nourishment that I really wanted. Not to mention there were a lot of extras that really were just extras and wanted to just do extra work. A lot of the ones I worked with, they weren't really professional because they were sort of fangirling over actors and actresses that they had seen on set. People have to remember that this is a job and you do have to give them respect. I was very fortunate enough to be a part of shows like Neighbours, Offspring, a series called Picnic at Hanging Rock. But funnily enough, my first job was actually a pads commercial. I actually even tried out auditioning for Filipino Big Brother. Uh, that was weird, but yeah, I did that and that was a dream come true to have to be able to audition for that. I didn't get in, but it was cool. It was a cool experience. Talia, are you asking me to define colorblindness? Now, if you want to be an extra, that's totally fine. It's an awesome gig that you can do. You get some cash in your hand and you get to sort of be a part of productions without, in a way, putting in as much work as you would have to as an actor. Soy. So 2017 onwards, I got serious. My whole career as an actor so far has been a whole bunch of short courses. I, I think I could compile all the short courses that I've done into at least one or two years worth of acting experience. You're not making any sense. And that for me, is ongoing, that's never gonna end. So I've constantly tried to find more short courses, more coaches, more actresses and actors that I can work with, just so I can learn all the different styles and everything that's out there. Now I trained under NFTA here in Melbourne and specifically I trained under Nancy. Nancy, if you're watching this video, Shout out to you for everything that you've done. But she basically was my first ever major acting coach and she's, even till now, she still guides me through a lot of the things. I actually was supposed to go to LA as part of another course that she runs in August, but because of COVID and everything that's happening, I had to put that on hold and hopefully I'll be able to do that next year. Pa, ma, completa na. After completing that course, that opened up a whole world for me because I felt like I could be taken seriously as an actor now. I still had to do a whole lot more training, so I did. I, I've been taking short courses here and there. Over the time, I've actually signed up to multiple websites that require you to basically have a profile available for both professional and independent industries. Specifically in Australia, I use a website called Star Now. It's also really cool. It's kind of like a seek or a job search for actors or creatives, models, photographers, anything that you wouldn't really normally find in a nine to five sort of job seek website. Pretty much from 2017 all the way through to 2020, I just, I would apply for everything. I've applied for so many jobs, over like maybe two to 300 jobs a year 
just people putting up ads, student films, um, independent productions, some paid and some unpaid. Overall, it was an experience and I was able to get some footage of myself. I was able to add that to my showreel, which is also available on my YouTube channel if you have time to check it out. My very first acting coach actually when I did the Grease musical was Miranda Tapsell, you know her from the Sapphires. She actually is from Darwin as well and she came up and taught us during that time. I don't even know if she remembers but that was definitely a big turning point for me and she was really awesome to learn from. Other people I've worked with are like Nancy Risk, as I mentioned before, from the Hollywood Initiative. I've worked with Rebecca in Sydney from Acting with Beck. I've been fortunate enough to learn from institutions such as NIDA, so the National Institute of Dramatic Arts here in Australia, as well as TAFTA. Um, I've been fortunate enough to also learn from American um, coaches as well and casting directors such as Scotty Mullins and Anthony Galati. Um, who, by the way, if you're watching this video, you guys are awesome. In Australia, I have profiles with my current agencies on casting networks. I will want to get one eventually with Showcast, which I heard is a very big one. I just haven't had money for it. Unfortunately, it's always financial. As well as running my own website which was recommended to me by a mate to basically have your own website as a portfolio where you, everyone can just kind of go on and find everything about you so all of those links and all of the people that I've mentioned they will be in the description below for you to check out if you want to if you'll excuse me I stink so I'm gonna go have a quick shower okay my acting journey over the past couple of years I've been through probably like four or five different agents it is very hard to find the right agent a lot of people didn't take me seriously when I was saying, hey, I wanna be an actor and I wanna do acting work, they would try to put me into a box of extra work and that for me, just it just didn't cut it. Being someone who wanted to take it seriously and my agent wasn't backing me with that, so I had to drop a lot of agents. I took ownership of that. I would give myself a whole year to be with them and see how that all turned out. And you can kind of gauge based on the sort of communication you guys have with each other, whether they trust you and you trust them, the type of work you get from them. Those are definitely things you need to keep an eye out if you're trying and starting in this industry because you have to have a connection and communication with your agent. They're like your parents in this industry. So they, they take care of you, but you do have to be able to communicate that with them. But hey, let's be real. It might not be for you. Thankfully, this year has been very good. I've actually been able to secure. I'm with CMT uh, Management, thanks to Nancy again, who recommended them and they've been amazing. Um, the communication with them has been really cool. I've been able to get quite a bit of decent work despite being in isolation. It's just a lot of video submissions. For me, it's really cool to see where I was in 2013 up until now. I mean, as of 2019, I started modeling and, and my hand at that, and I've been fortunate enough to get modeling agencies through that as well. So you never really know what you can get if you just sort of try your hand at it. For me, I've always been a dreamer. I've always been someone big on the arts, and I know that one day, one day, I will get my chance on the big screen. One of my goals is to be on a Marvel film. So if Marvel, Disney, if you're watching this, I'm very thankful for my journey from going from extra to actor. Um, there are so many different sort of experiences that you can get from both. And if you want to be an extra, it's very easy to get into. Like I can tell you now, it is very easy to get into. I had no experience prior to doing that. But if you want to be an actor, you do have to step up your game. You have to do more, you have to learn all the techniques or the ones that work for you at least. And you need to work on so many different aspects of your acting career. It hasn't become a full-time job yet for me, but hopefully one day it will. And I've been thankful that I do get opportunities from time to time to be able to flex my acting muscles. Hope you enjoyed my little story of how I went from extra to actor. If there's anything in this video that you found interesting that you would like for me to sort of dive more deeply into, um, I'd be more than happy to create a video for that. I want to be a great actor one day and I hope that I can tell some pretty epic stories before my time is up. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Peace. There you go, man. Thanks, man. Guess you are the leader. Yeah, well, the relationship... <laughs>